right, we're back. Um, so for you, Omar, why do you think some partners put more time and effort into their significant other than their children? Does hatred towards their ex play a part? Um, <clears throat> I would say if someone is putting more effort into their partner rather than their children, um, I would have to I would have to look at it as what what are the values that they're holding on to in the moment that is overseeing their responsibilities. Um, so like you have the responsibility of being your parent, but then you might have a value that's surrounded around intimacy and connection um, and being cared and loved for. So if say for instance if there is two people and we have uh, a kid <clears throat> or even like two kids let's just say they were siblings you might have where this person is dating this person a is dating person b person a is the parent of the two kids and maybe they want to be able to like uh, spend more time with person b there could be circumstances circumstances whereby may have been a young a young parent. They may have had these two kids when they were young, so they felt as they feel as though they lost their the prime of like their youthful years, and so they want to be able to gain it back by spending that time with this person, um, because maybe whoever was the, the the father or even the mother of these two kids, depending on who is the one who has custody. Um, they might feel as though like I missed out because I had to uh, immediately jump into this responsibility and I want to go and spend time with this person. And unfortunately, by doing that, that neglects the needs of the children. And, and what ends up happening is the children, um, uh, especially when there's like at least more than two kids, um, one of them has to take on the role of being a parent. And so this is where you get the the what the term a parentified child where they have to take the responsibilities of what the parents should be taking. Um, and over time, that has its own effects on that child when as they grow older. But in short, to go back to answer the question, if a person is choosing their partner over the kids, it's either one, they're choosing them because they want to be able to relive or extend their youthful years of being able to just be single and dating and enjoying that relationship. Um, two, um, they, they don't quite understand the responsibilities of what it means to be a parent, um, regardless of their age. They might lean on to friends and family members to almost do what I call community parenting, where they leave the kids off there and they do their own thing. Um, yes, the, the old school saying of it takes a village to raise a child, that, that, does make sense. However, it, 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 the village is not just solely responsible for that child. The village helps raise the child. But when the parent chooses to just use the village to raise the child, then that's that's different. Um, and then when you bring up the, what was the second part of the question about the ex? Um, well, it's like, does hatred towards their ex play a part? Like, you know how um, you'll hear some moms say, you're just like your dad. And, you know, they have this oh. like sense of hatred towards the father that sometimes rolls over because, you know, the, the father must have did something to them. And that per particular thinking, um, you know, do you feel like that plays a role in them putting too much effort and time into the new relationship to the point where it's like, you know, they, the guy might have given them a little bit more attention than the old relationship. And so they don't want to lose the guy. So then they put a lot of effort. They put a lot of um, effort into the relationship to the point where they kind of push the kid. Like they just do the basics. Like, oh, I'm going to feed you. I'll clothe you. I'll shelter you. But affection and, you know, attention and guiding guidance is no longer there. 
Yeah, that um, I would say, I would say, I would call that they're projecting the anger onto the kids. The anger is actually towards the ex. Mm -hmm. um, the kids, the kids did not do anything to deserve that type of treatment. So could that be possible? Yes, it is possible for a person could be so upset, annoyed, frustrated, pissed off about whatever the ex may have done um, to leave them in that place. And so when they look at their kids, the kids is a result of that relationship. And so it's a constant reminder of how things fucked up, essentially. And so they might end up projecting anger to the kids, even though it's not about the kids. It's about how you feel about your ex. And so, yes, they might try to salvage or not salvage, but they might try to do whatever they can with this relationship um, in order to foster something healthier. But it ends up backfiring because then that person is also going to see like how they treat their kids um, and whether or not if if that person, whoever they're dating, is someone who understands the responsibility of parenting, I can only hope that that person encourages them like, hey, you want to spend time with your kids? Like, I know you're spending a lot of time with me and I'm grateful for that, but eventually I'm going to need to like get to know these kids. Um, and I want to see like how you are as a parent. And you never know when they might try to like postpone that as much because maybe they don't want to see them and how they actually act with their kids or how upset they might get with their kids when the kids are just doing like kid stuff um, because that might also change the dynamics between them um, and the kids might also notice a shift in the in the parents behavior and it might be they might think like you're being much more nicer than ever so then the kids attach the change in behavior from the parent with this new person so they might attach themselves with this new person because maybe whatever this part this new person is doing has created a different parent and I like who this parent is. And so unfortunately then that brings up a different cycle, which is if they break up, then they get the old parent. And those, so the kids then associate, like this is what it means to be in a relationship, that people will change you. And so then that's how they start developing this idea of what relationships mean. And people don't realize the, the impact that your choices and decisions have on kids with relationships, even though kids may not see the, in and out of the the dynamics of the relationship, they do feel the effects of it um, through you as a person. They might see you cry or hear you cry, see you get upset and see the changes in your behavior and they reflect on that due to the relationship or that's how their little brains are trying to make sense of it. So do you re recommend that those, um, they would probably get like just a single counseling The parent or, just, or the um yeah that would be the question would it be both of them at the same time I mean it is a relationship I, I I would say I would say once a couple if it once and if a couple were to separate for whatever reason and kids are involved I would highly recommend for that that parent to consider um, counseling either for themselves and or family counseling, especially if they're fully aware that the ending of that relationship may have had a direct or indirect impact on the kids, um, especially if kids are constantly asking, oh, where's daddy or where's mommy? When are we going to see them? How come you guys aren't together? Why, why did they pick this stuff up and leave? Why are we moving? So when kids have questions and you can't really give them like straightforward answers or you choose yeah. to give answers, but your answers are highly influenced based on how you feel like, mm -hmm. oh, we're leaving because it's your it's your dad's fault. It's your mom's fault. Then you're you're doing a disservice because now you're pushing the kids into a position of having to unintentionally choose sides um, because now they have to side with you, even though that they also they, they enjoy both parents. Um, so when it comes to family counseling, it's more to do with how the parent and child can move through this change. Because if a parent doesn't know what's the best way to describe what's happening in their relationship to a child, depending on what age they are, then they're better off sharing that within the context of like counseling. 
have the counselor, have a family therapist help you how to bridge that gap of explaining the situation or the change for them. So that way the kid has a platform to share how they feel um, and their concerns. Um, um, for, the, for the person, I would say their best bet is to speak with like a relationship counselor. Um, the reason being is because um, <clears throat> they need to go speak to someone who has an ongoing history and expertise of, of the nuances of relationships, whether or not it's communication, intimacy, and so forth. So they have space to really explore what contributions that they make or did not make that contributed to the downfall of the relationship. Because the relationship is the two-way thing. Even if you truly believe in your heart of hearts, it's the other person's fault. That that could that could be possible, but what did you do or did not do that also contributes to where it has happened? There are circumstances where you didn't do anything wrong, but it was the choices that you made afterwards that may have contributed to where you're at now. Like you could have thought that the relationship was great, and then you found out that the person cheated on you, and now you're stuck of like, what am I supposed to do now? That is a moment where you need to consider doing counseling, not let the relationship continue and then things go sour, and then you start having a lot of hatred towards a specific gender, uh, and then feel as though you attribute all those, all of the all of the folks who fit in line with that gender sucked because of what this person did. So like, if a woman had cheated on me, I'm just gonna say all women suck because they're all cheaters, or vice versa. That is not fair to the entire population of women. It's only this person made that choice. And so I think it's it would behoove the person to get counseling immediately once they like a, a, a for lack of the words, a traumatic situation has occurred that has now put you in a place of not being able to sleep at night, holding some sense of anxiety, holding a lot of anger and resentment. Those are not healthy to sustain yourself with those emotions because it's going to affect everything else. It's gonna affect how you parent because you're easily gonna be annoyed with your kids by just doing kids stuff. You're not gonna be as productive at work. Um, you're not gonna be yourself, you're gonna lose sleep. Um, these are things that when they, when those things shift, it's best for the person to be preventative. Now, if they weren't thinking because maybe the situations went so quickly that it just it needed to end, maybe it was so toxic and unhealthy, the person just needed to leave the relationship and it wasn't salvageable, then yeah, it would still be, I would still, it doesn't hurt especially nowadays, you don't have to go to an office. You can just set up a time where you can do like a, a, a video conferencing meeting with someone for like 45 minutes an hour. You just need that amount of time. And it could be where you could um, try to set up something where let's just say you're, <clears throat> you're thinking about time, you're so busy. The only time you have is while you're driving your car to maybe go from work to pick up your kids. And you can potentially book a session with someone where it's a 30 minute session and you're in your car, you put it on FaceTime on your phone, but you put your phone down so that they can hear you and you can have that conversation in the car. I think it's, it's more about just as soon as there's a pattern of behaviors that are not healthy um, or would be considered not healthy, um, that is when people need to get help. <clears throat> it's funny that you said that because um, I always feel like people should get help regardless. I remember the first time I ever got counseling was when my uncle passed away and mm -hmm. it rocked me and I started drinking and just took a couple days off of work and I spent those couple days drinking. So it was mm -hmm. kind of like, um, it was kind of like I just checked out. And I remember going to my job and I told them, I was like, I just don't even feel like coming back to work. And they're like, okay, we'll sign you up for a therapy while you're out. So I went on like a medical leave and um, like I, I did the counseling and stuff. And then like, I, I finally got my shit together and was just like, ah, all right, I needed to accept what everybody else was accepting all these years that, you know, when people pass away that it's um it's part of life and you'll never know if you'll ever you might just run into them again um 
So it's like, you know, you just got to accept it for what it is. But then the second time was when I started college and I had just had the twins. Um, our relationship was kind of uh, separating and it was struggling because I was working, going to school. I would come home like 11 o'clock at night and I was working part time and going to school full time. And the anxiety of it was just rough. And I just remember um, one of the school counselors was like, you probably just go get some um, school therapy or mm -hmm. like therapy or something like that to deal with your anxiety and stress. And I was like, all right, because changes. I just remember her most valuable word is when you have changes in your life and they become like overwhelming, sometimes you probably need somebody to bounce stuff off of because, um, because you like life can become overwhelming. So, I mean, do you feel like it's beneficial to, outside of relationships that people go to therapy just because, you know, every day to day stuff? Yeah, I would say <clears throat> I wouldn't want people to look at therapy as the be all end all, but I want I want folks to look at it as like um um as like a resource or think about it like when we when 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 we're trying as human beings when we're trying to live healthy sustainable lives <clears throat> we may um buy like vitamins or supplements um as a way to like help us but we cannot rely on those vitamins and supplements we have to make choices based on our eating habits and um, our exercise activity we just use vitamins to supplement some of the things that we're not getting in our everyday lives and so i look at counseling as that counseling is a supplement to what you should already have what you should already have is a healthy network of friends you should have um, it, depending on one's life, uh, some level of connection to people um, that you can go to. Now, <clears throat> friends offer uh, common sense or common advice, while a therapist or a counselor offers more of like what is considered clinical support. Clinical support is... <clears throat> As a counselor, my responsibility is to help help you slow down some of your thought processes so that you can then think about what decisions and choices you're gonna make. A friend <clears throat> might go into what I consider like a problem solving mode. They hear your problem, they immediately either they'll listen to you, they might ask questions, but they might go into like trying to help you solve the issue. But sometimes you don't need a, a resolution you just need someone to talk to and sometimes people don't want to feel that they're burdening their friends so they might choose to go to a counselor um, because they might say like I know that my friends are going to side with me I know my family's going to side with me but I want someone neutral and I think that's what people use might view counseling as as a neutral space to really think through like I need someone to tell me did I fuck up um, is am I crazy? And I tell people all the time, you're not crazy. Um, um, you might make decisions and you might make choices that seem crazy, but we have to spend time to really slow down and ask intentional questions around how come you made these choices? What was important to you? I don't know if friends would do that. I think friends would say like, no, that guy's stupid. You don't need him anymore. But it, again, their their allegiance is to you. Their my allegiance is to your overall well being. Um, you can make messed up choices, and depending on my relationship to you as a client, I'll tell you like what you do was fucked up because it goes against what you told me before. What uh, the type of person you want to work towards. So if you want to work towards being a more considerate person, and you made a choice that was inconsiderate, then I'll call you on it because you said you're coming in here to work on that and I'm keeping you accountable to that. It's almost like I'm your mental personal trainer. I'm going to tell you what you're, what you're doing wrong based on what you're telling me. Um, I don't know you. <clears throat> I'm, I'm not going to claim that I know you more than you know yourself. However, based on what you tell me, I'm going to tell you what I am understanding 
based on what you're saying. So if you're telling me this and I tell you, say, I'm so mad, I'm going to punch him in the face. Okay, so you're telling me you're going to punch him in the face. And then you hear it back, exactly your words, and you're like, oh, no, no, that's not what I mean. I don't actually want to punch him in the face. I'm just so upset that that's how I feel. And so that's, um, it's a term that a supervisor um, had taught me, which is saving the said from the same, which basically means someone said something, but when you repeat it back to them exactly how they said it, they hear it very differently. And so they try to save it from the, from the air because whatever they said has a different meaning and intention based on what they heard it. So it's just like the punching in the face. Like you might so, say you're going to punch someone in the face, but your intention is not to actually. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, say that again. Save the. Save the um, face. Saving the said. Oh, saving the said. Saving, saving the said from the same. So oh, said okay. as an S A S A I D and then saying S A Y I N G. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I said something, but that's not what I mean. No, I um, got you. Yeah. So um, I tend to always be like the devil's advocate and my friends hate it. They don't like to talk to me because like I don't try to agree with them. I try to look at the whole picture. And mm -hmm. I guess a lot of times it's kind of like you said, you have an allegiance to them. And I was just like, I might have an allegiance to you, but is it going to benefit you at the end of the day for me to tell you what you want to hear? So, well, I think that's, a, I think that, I think what a lot of people <clears throat> don't do often is they don't tell their friends what they actually need from them when they come to them with an issue. I think, and that's what I see with a lot of couples where <clears throat> you people don't make it clear. I'm coming to you with something and I want your help to resolve it. Or I'm coming to you with something and I just want you to listen to me. Um, like, I just want to vent. And if you don't make things clear, then people are going to get upset because they might say, I didn't come to you for you to tell me to be the devil's advocate. I came to you just to like vent and just to share. Like I need a, I need a cheerleader right now. I don't need someone to tell me what I did was wrong. I just need to like say something just to get a like a mental boost. Um, and so I think people <clears throat> in general, um, we don't think to ourselves of trying to be intentional in conversations. I just think that we just take advantage of um um, we take advantage of our assumption that people should know how to talk to us, not realizing unless you went to school for communication, no one really got taught how to really communicate in a relationship or even friendship. You just, nice. you vibe with someone, they, they, they um, had similar interests and, and, and values as you, and then you just went with it. But then eventually every friendship goes through an argument so how do you navigate it yeah that's true you got me over here thinking <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to be having me think they're supposed to be thinking out there <laughs> so um this was another segment my friend brought up and i don't know you're probably not the type of person to condone mm -hmm. that but um do you think polygamy is you don't even have to answer you could be like i'm not answering that question but do you think polygamy is best for this era the idea of being able to have multiple spouses yeah uh, um <clears throat> well like in my personal opinion, what i've seen professionally professionally personal life your girlfriend's gonna kick your butt if you answer this question but um like first <laughs> like professionally when you see people or you talk to people um <clears throat> so your question is is poly is now the best era for polygamy yeah, because we did a segment on it a while back and my friend out of nowhere, she's was, she was my co-host and my per diem co-host, she, um, she brought it up to me and I was like, why are we doing this? And she's like, because I thought it was a good idea because I think 
it's like doable and I'm like you're in a monogamous relationship and we're talking about polygamy okay so that's why I was like are you serious and she's like yeah she's like I it wouldn't be a problem for her and I'm like I don't know if I could I could share but then she started talking about um I guess Holly Andreas and I was like, oh, okay, maybe. <laughs> but like, I just wanted to know what your opinion about that is. Yeah, so I think, so to me, there is um, polygamy or the notion of being able to, to have multiple marriages, which my understanding, and I could be wrong, if if that is considered outlawed in the United States versus like in outside countries where it might be legal mm -hmm. um, versus like polyamory um, the notion of of, <clears throat> of having um, intimate relationships with more than one person at the same time um, so professionally um, uh, I have not had exposure to those who've been in polygamy in terms of having multiple marriages mm -hmm. um, but I have worked who have been in polyamorous relationships um, um and these are married couples who invited another person um into their relationship and um so if we're looking at it from a health perspective where things have advanced so much that there's so many forms of contraceptives that people can do and, and do what they please as long as they are being safe about it. Now, we're speaking about um, um, couples who um, have an, have an uh, so there's, there's so many different categories. There's like, there's an open marriage um, then you have just a, a relationship where someone can invite a third party or be in a polyamorous relationship. Um, then you have just people just, um, uh, what is that called? Um, when you what? Um, I feel like there's a pineapple. I, it's something with a pineapple, an upside down pineapple or a star or something. Um, there's people who engage in like these sex orgies and parties um, where you're given permission to the other person to have sex with your wife. I forgot what they're called, um, but there's like a specific fruit or something um, that's attached to a specific symbol. Anyways, um, so is it the best era? Um, I would say if it's in line with your, if it's in line with how you view relationships, then now is the best era because there's so much openness around it. Mm -hmm. um, however, for some people, it might go against their values because they might value monogamy mm -hmm. um, and they might value a sense of just like commitment towards this one other person. Um, some people might view it as polygamy as an excuse just sex with someone else outside of the relationship mm -hmm. um um but they're neat but with polygamy there's um uh, my understanding is there has to be rules there has to be certain rules in place um in order for that to work and and the, the difficulty around that and i've i've seen couples in this situation when those rules get bent or those rules get gray and when those rules get bent and gray feelings are attached to it and then it messes up the, the the original dyad of the couple um and so um <clears throat> i don't know if i'm answering your question <laughs> it was a very awkward question <laughs> it was a very awkward segment i i have to say i mean i pretty much was just laughing the whole time she was giving me all the information about it so um, mm -hmm. it's not a road I want to travel down so that's why mm -hmm. I, I just thought it was funny because when she said you could have more than one husband I was like oh yeah because I got one that's going to clean the house and <laughs> that's where I was going with <laughs> all of that but um, just so we can wrap this up and you could give us some um, information um, like 
you say you you do a business aspect so you do like a business consulting as well Is yeah that so i um so i have uh, so my primary um business is doing counseling for couples mm -hmm. and then i'm um, starting a second business which is um business coaching for therapists and helping them understand the business side of building their own counseling practice okay and so where would they go to find you if they need to <clears throat> if if i if it was a couple that wanted to do counseling with me um the it would be just on my website which is uh uh talkthinkthrive.com that's t a l k t h i n k t h r i v e um the only issue when it comes to counseling is that and this applies to a lot of counselors is that they can only see people based on where they are licensed so i'm licensed only in massachusetts so that means mm -hmm. i can only see folks who either work in or reside in Massachusetts. Right. Um, um, for the business coaching, um, the website is uh, online, privatepractice.com. Mm -hmm. um, and um, for that side, it's more of helping therapists improve their online presence um, mm -hmm. so that that way they can get more client referrals. Because I think um, even coming from my own experience building a counseling business, you don't go, we didn't go to school for business. So we don't necessarily understand what it means to like market ourselves mm -hmm. or understand the nuances of like how to really show up on Google. Um, what we've been trained to do is help people, but they didn't train us about building a business. And so then also the conversations about building business was always shunned upon. They would always say like, you didn't come into this field to make money. Well, I'm tr we're trying to break that mode and say like, no, you can still make money. Like, yeah just because I'm working with certain folks does not mean that my time is not as valuable as maybe an accountant or as like a landscaper. Like yeah. I'm still helping people and my time is still worth something. So yeah. for those folks who need help on improving like their business aspect, then they can just go to online private practice.com. And I'm right now building a, a YouTube channel um, to like get more of the awareness out about like how to build the business. Oh, that would be helpful. And it's under the same, it's under the same name. It's under, uh, 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 <clears throat> yeah, it's under the same name, online private practice. And that, I think that goes with any health professional that's trying to build a, a, a private practice. It could be like a physical therapist. It could be um, even a nurse who wants to have their own um, private business. Um, it's more about just like the nuances of like uh, building a small business from the ground up. Yeah, because these doctors are... They're used to just insurance company referring the patients over to them. And, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I know, um, like, I, I know a lot of people are doing telemedicine now, a lot of doctors. Like, they'll, that's, like, included when you make a doctor's appointment. Do you want to see them in person or do you want to see them um, over the phone? And it's awesome because I'm just like, I don't feel like going to the doctors today, but I have to. So, let me do it from my house in my pajamas type of thing. So I, I think that was a wonderful benefit that we have to still be able to see our doctors and, and um, do all that. So that is a big help for um, these uh, upcoming doctors, you know, to advertise out there. Um, but I guess they're only limited to their own state, right? You could, you could branch out too later on if you, get like licensing because i'm in california well, yeah for like like yeah i think um even for therapists you could get licensed in multiple states um but that's in its own nuance of like which state do you want to get licensed what's the reasoning for getting licensed like there are some people who <clears throat> they might be licensed in california and they were building their practice whether if it's a nurse physical therapist or a counselor and then they, all of a sudden they moved to boston but they still have referrals coming in from California. So they want to maintain that license in California um, while getting their license established in, in Massachusetts. So that's why for some people, they might want to keep those multiple licenses. Mm -hmm. And because of COVID, there was a lot of um, uh, lessening of the guidelines um, to be able to provide uh, telemedicine or telehealth services to people across state lines. 
because there are rural areas that didn't have enough providers to service the community. And so then people were allowed to like do provide services interstate. Uh, but I think, I don't know if we've arrived fully at like a post COVID world, but I, I can mm -hmm. see now that some states are pulling back from that, from that, um, from that, uh, um, loose restriction uh, mm -hmm. of being able to like service people in those states and they're trying to like hone back in and just go back to their original which is you can only service if you're here and there's no exceptions gotcha so we're gonna wrap up but just one um thing that we really didn't touch on and we just just for give us like a just a simple version of it but what would be your advice to those people that have broken up and, you know, and now they're used to being two and now they're one, is there any advice you can give them? Well, how to like, um, um <clears throat> go ahead. If they have just broken up, um, uh, number one is, um, get yourself into counseling. Um, so that you can be able to have a, a, a platform that is safe where you can express yourself regardless of what emotions you're going through. Two, do the best that you can to connect with friends that you trust. And what I mean by trust, meaning that you're going to them and that you know that whatever you share is in safe hands and they're not there to judge you, they're there to support you. Mm -hmm. um, three, you need to start... Um, Start or continue to engage in things that bring joy and pleasure to your life, whether or not that's <clears throat> you going to church, you going to the gym, um, maybe focusing on school and work and doing the best that you can. Um, <clears throat> um, and focus on those three areas, like your space, your, your social space, and just your um, overall health. Um, those, are, those are the top three things that I would, I would consider people doing. And... As far as the type of therapist, I would say speak with a relationship therapist so that that way you have the space to really learn about what mistakes or things that you need to learn from the relationship. So that way, whenever you do feel comfortable and go back to the next relationship, you are able to learn from it um, and actually practice some of those things, whether or not it's listening, communication or anything else. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. And um just look out for Omar if you're in the Massachusetts area. If you just had a breakup, he is available. And, you know, for all the doctors and everyone else out there that needs a little business savvy, Omar's the guy for you. <laughs>